you're probably staying at home as well. Um, what are some things that you have um, included in your diet or changed about your diet? <laughs> I'm still working. <laughs> yeah. Um, my, my patient load has uh, reduced, um, but I still see inpatients. So there are, you know, other people who require, uh, you know, uh, nutritional, you know, care and attention. So I still see those cases. Um, but yes, I agree with you. I cook more than usual at home, but I do usually cook at home anyway. And it's um, it's really exciting because I see a lot of people cooking now at home and, and it makes me excited because in the past, when I see patients, everyone say, oh, no, I don't cook, you know, I just eat out, it's so easy to eat out. And so now I see more and more people cooking and you can see that their cooking skills are gradually in, uh, improving on social media and, and it's uh, so exciting to see. Now, people who cook more often at home should consider using some healthier ingredients if it's a staple meaning that you're cooking oil say for example because if you change your cooking oil you're making a difference uh, in the diet of your entire family because most likely you're not going to buy one oil for, for this person and the oil for that person so if you change to say an extra virgin olive oil for cooking then everybody eats healthy uh, same thing with you know your grains your basic grains your breads is to choose whole grain um, and if you are considering to bake more which I do more now um, it is to consider reducing things like butter uh, or shortening and consider switching to any cooking oil. It does work. It just requires a little bit of try and error. So like myself, um, I would switch some of the um, uh, uh, butter in my baking to olive oil. In fact, I switch some recipes, especially those that are not very sensitive, like a, a muffin or even some of the smaller cupcakes. You can actually just replace entirely with an olive oil. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we bake a lot more means that we're going to use a lot of sugar, right? So based, depending on the recipe, I would suggest to people to reduce it at a quarter at a time. So if the recipe calls for uh, one cup of sugar, you might want to reduce it to three quarter cups and hopefully the end product is still the same uh, and so I personally use uh, interestingly um, a coconut sugar or a uh, like a gula malaka right? and it comes in a hard block and I just grind it down and I use that as my source of sugar I'm not saying that it's any better uh, but it also gives my food more flavor without having to add a lot to it so I'm using that at the moment um, and I'm using instead of, you know, um, flavoring my cakes with artificial flavoring, um, um, I would use a green tea powder, uh, like a matcha powder and use that together, you know, as uh, uh, with my uh, cake. And so you get a flavored cake without adding, you know, anything uh, artificial or uh in my case, I am actually after the catechin inside green tea. And so, you know, that is health enhancing and functional at the same time. Lastly, with the baking, because I think, you know, cooking people kind of know, remove the fat, use a heart healthy oil, but baking, people tend to, you know, still struggle a little bit, I, I assume, uh, with trying to refine the recipe. I actually use um, a wheat germ and, and I think, you know, a wheat germ is a great, great source of vitamin D, you know, uh, sorry, vitamin E as well as, uh, you know, vitamin Bs. Um, and um, it is usually found in grains like wheat, but it's taken out so that we can make white flour, you know, so that, you know, the results of baking is uh, what we want to achieve. Um, but we can actually use a little bit of that and put it back into your baking so that you enhance the nutritional, you know, value of your baked goods. Mm -hmm.